the instructions detailing the installation and use of the engine backward moving tool may be found in the H160 aircraft maintenance manual. This video is designed to supplement the guidance in the AMM. Should a discrepancy exist between the written documentation and this video, the written document shall prevail. We will break this video down into three steps. First, we will remove the cowlings, ducts, pipes, hoses, and protections necessary to properly access the area surrounding the engine. Next, we will install the tool to include removing the engine to gearbox drive shaft and coupling. And finally, we will actually move the engine back. For this demonstration, we will only perform the rollback procedure on one side of the helicopter. However, the procedure is identical on both sides. The removal of the cowlings is straightforward. However, it will likely take two technicians 90 minutes to accomplish the entire task. As you progress through this process, remember to install the appropriate covers to protect the engine from FOD. As we remove various cowlings, we will also be removing items necessary to allow installation of the tool. First, we will remove the air-cooled oil cooler duct assembly. We begin by loosening the forward clamp which secures the flexible piece of the duct assembly to the air outlet duct. Next, we will loosen the clamp which holds the duct assembly to the center firewall. Then we can slide the clamp out of the firewall attachment support. Now we can remove the three quick fasteners which connect the outlet seal to the rear firewall. We are ready to slide the entire assembly forward, away from the aft engine firewall and then aft from the outlet duct itself and ultimately out from the engine bay. Now we can remove the air outlet duct from the engine itself. We chose to cover the actual plenum with tape to ensure no FOD enters. Next, we will remove the fire protection covers from the engine support rods. The two rear guide plates may be installed on the engine deck. We will install the inboard plate first, and then the outboard plate. Now we can install the rear foot assemblies to the engine using the lower ball pins. We will continue by installing the interface of the lifting device assembly to the top of each rear foot assembly and the engine using the two setting nuts and the two ball pins per assembly. The single front foot assembly may now be installed. First, this small assembly must be separated. Then we will thread the tool into the engine. Once fully threaded into the engine, we can reattach and secure the lower portion of the foot onto the threaded piece. The front guiding plate may now be installed directly under the front foot assembly. It will be secured on two engine deck pins. Now, we must install the ball pin into the guiding plate to prevent the foot assembly from prematurely sliding on the plate. Finally, unthread the front foot until it contacts the guiding plate. Now we will move aft to the rear lifting device assemblies and hand tighten the setting nuts one on the outboard and one on the inboard assembly. Install the rear handle and tighten the knurl screws to hold it firmly in place. Now we can install the forward handle to the engine. Adjust the two rear feet so that the angle between the feet and the engine deck is 90 degrees. There should be approximately one and a half to two centimeters of space between the bottom of each foot and the respective guiding plate. Once this is accomplished, tighten the neural nuts to lock the feet at the correct length. Now we will remove the ductwork, firewall, and shielding to gain access to the main rotor gearbox coupling at the front of the engine. 
Take your time. This can be a bit tedious. We will also need to pull the lower air inlet rigid duct off the starter generator. We can now install the engine to main rotor gearbox coupler hold and protect tool. We will begin by installing the four plastic protectors. Before removing the through bolts from within each gimbal pin, mark them so that they may be returned to their original position within the gimbal assembly during reassembly. We placed a towel inside the gimbal to help protect the drive shaft as we loosened the four pins. Now we will remove the diaper retainers from the four gimbal pins. We recommend using a piece of phenolic or plastic to facilitate this action. This will further minimize the chances of damaging a component. Now we will thread the special pin extraction tool into each of the four pins to remove them from the gimbal ring itself. Again, ensure that you keep each pin together as previously marked. the bellows may be repositioned forward away from the engine itself. Now we can properly position the tool on the engine and gearbox. Once both ends are correctly placed, we can secure the tool. Tighten the four bolts sufficiently well to immobilize the outer clevis assembly on the torque tube assembly. Now we will disconnect the main rotor gearbox coupling tube from the main rotor gearbox itself. We will begin by using a scraper to carefully remove the sealant from between the main rotor gearbox torque tube and the main rotor gearbox input cover. Additionally, we will need to remove the sealant from the threads of the 10 studs and also from the nuts themselves. Discard these 10 nuts. New ones will be required for assembly. Once all the sealant and hardware is removed, we can loosen the four neural nuts on the tool. Ensure that the two ball pins are removed from the outer clevis and slide the main rotor gearbox torque tube and gimbal ring contained within the outer clevis aft towards the engine. Now, insert the two ball pins and tighten the four neural nuts to keep the tool properly positioned. With the torque tube out of the way, we can remove the nine bolts from the engine drive shaft. Discard these nuts as well. New ones will be required for assembly. Once the bolts are removed from the drive shaft, it is completely disconnected from the main rotor gearbox input pinion and now free to slide aft with the engine. Remove the ball pin from the front guiding plate. Now the engine is free to be rolled back away from the main rotor transmission. Grasp the front handle and gently move the engine aft. Of course, it should be moved slowly and smoothly. Confirm that the engine is stable and that there is nothing binding. With the engine successfully rolled back, you may now attend to whatever maintenance procedure required it to be moved. As with any maintenance task, the key to success is reading the instructions and not rushing.